Just like a lot of things in training, when you're training your rotator cuff or when we're progressing certain exercises, we want to have a similar progression for our rotator cuff. Again, that's going to allow us to train what we want to train, so make sure we're getting the proper stimulus, but also you're going to be more safely and also effectively. So again, we take the same approach when it comes to your rotator cuff training. So again, whether you're a pitcher, quarterback, whatever it is, we need a nice, strong, uh, reactive uh, rotator cuff stuff. So anyways, we typically take like three steps to our, our rotator cuff training. Uh, we're going to go over that here with you guys real here real quick. Uh, and first thing and foremost, we want to start from the floor. What that does, it allows you to relax and really isolate and think about more so learn, not because we want to isolate the rotator cuff to, to strengthen it or make it bigger and stronger, uh, but we just want you to get that motion feel like what it feels like to, to strictly rotate through your humeral head because again your uh, your um, humeral head is like a ball in a socket like a golf ball sitting on a tee so we need that thing just rotating inside there we can't have it bouncing around that's what's going to cause pain and discomfort for a lot of you guys so we start you phase one uh, again if, especially if it's a youth guy youth athlete laying on their back and then again just getting making that mind muscle connection of seeing what it feels like to strictly do that humor rotation again. Uh, best analogy I heard, think of your bicep over here. Again, it's like a rotisserie chicken, so just rotating along that. So shout out to Eric Cressy for that. Um, little quick tip. So start on the ground, do that external rotation, get used to what that feels like, then we'll take you to level two, okay? Level two is gonna be your half kneeling position. So what's gonna really change here is the fact that you're standing. So we got more stuff going on. So we have to consider our rib position, which we still need to in our first one. Uh, make sure we are locking those ribs down while we're on the ground. But this way it's gonna be your posture is gonna be challenged a lot more because again, your posture, your core is gonna dictate what your spine does, your spine is gonna dictate what your shoulder does. And then from there, obviously, if we throw in a ball, uh, it could be extra wear and tear, unnecessary stuff that we don't need going on in our shoulder joint, okay? It's putting extra stress on your rotator cuff. So, anyways, half kneeling, guys. Uh, let's take one foot forward, one knee down. Really control your posture, number one. Ribs are in, nice and tall through your head, and same exact motion, getting you used to that isolated feeling of that uh, rotator cuff muscle from there, okay? And then the third phase, if we really wanted to, we can just lift you up from that half kneeling position so you're in that split squat. So one knee's elevated, same thing, so now we're integrating the legs, the core, and obviously your upper body as well, still maintaining everything we learned from square one. So uh, that's just a simple progression of how we would start to integrate your rotator cuff training, especially if you're youth guys, you guys can use this at home. Uh, and as to when to progress from one to two to three, it really depends on the athlete, so in their conscious ability to control, um, control the motion, through their different phases of training, okay? So start at one, once you can own that, go on to stage number two, get that down very good, and then just progress from there for you guys, okay? So again, those are just a quick tip of how to progress your rotator cuff training. So make sure you give us a like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate you checking us out.